we continue to explore accelerated motion and continue working through different situations to apply, to apply our constant acceleration particle model, I'd like to give you this question to consider. If we consider down the ramp to be positive, I'd like you to draw acceleration versus time graphs for these two different configurations. How will the marble perform as it travels down each ramp? How would that be expressed in an acceleration versus time graph? I'd like you to sketch each ramp. I'd like you to sketch what you think the acceleration versus time plot would look like. Then I'd like you to talk about that with your neighbor. When you're ready to go ahead and resume to check your answer, please go ahead and resume the video. But at this time, pause the video so you can make your sketches and talk about it with your neighbor. Well, hopefully you had a chance to talk about what these predictions might look like. From the cart on a ramp lab, you might recall that our acceleration versus time was constant, and it was based on the angle of the ramp. A ramp like this would result in acceleration versus time of a horizontal constant positive value. But when we make the ramp steeper, the acceleration is even greater. So this brings the question, what is the configuration that would result in maximum acceleration? If we make it steeper, the acceleration goes up. If we keep making that ramp steeper and steeper, we're going to reach a maximum. And that's going to be a vertical orientation but we're not going to actually measure this with dropping a cart. We don't want to smash them into the floor and destroy them. So what we're going to do is we want to find out what this maximum acceleration would be. And we can do that with the equipment we have. I've taken a motion detector and mounted it on a ring support stand up here. And what we can do is, instead of dropping a cart, we can actually drop a playground ball and figure out what its velocity versus time graph would look like. Let's go ahead and do that and see if we can figure out what the acceleration of this object would be as it falls. So, I didn't record the entire motion, but you can see that when it was at rest, I was holding it here. And it's in this region here that I actually dropped the ball. And we can go ahead and find the slope of that region by clicking on the linear fit. So for that portion of the motion, the slope was 9.542 meters each second every second. So it was accelerating at 9.5 meters each second every second as it fell. Now, that's a pretty good and quick way to get this value for maximum acceleration. But there are some people who talk about the fact, well, is air resistance coming into play? Because they notice the size of this ball and the fact that it's round. It's not exactly slicing through the air as it falls. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to show you another piece of technology that we can actually use to explore this even further. I'm going to go ahead and open up a different file here that allows us to look at something called a picket fence. And the picket fence is a piece of plastic that has clear spots and black stripes on it. And it's used with a piece of technology that we've talked about before and used before called a photo gate. And this photo gate allows a beam of light to travel from one side of the U to the other. And when that beam of light gets broken, it sends a signal to the computer. Now, you probably can't see the little red light that turns on when the beam of light is broken. But it's there and it's operating. So what we're going to do is we're going to drop this picket fence through this photo gate. And Logger Pro has already stored within it the size of the stripes, 2 centimeters in width. And by figuring out the rate at which these stripes are passing, it can get velocity versus time information very quickly. So we'll go ahead and we will do the same experiment now, dropping the picket fence through the photo gate. And we will see what happens from that data. All right, so from this information, we can apply a linear fit to these points and see what our acceleration value is. And in this example, 
we're getting a value of 9.78 meters each second every second. I bring this up because the smaller cross section of the photo of the picket fence falling through the photo gate does a better job of eliminating the effect or minimizing the effect of air resistance. You should note that the scientifically accepted value for this free fall acceleration is actually about 9.8 meters each second every second. So we're going to write that down that this acceleration due to gravity is 9.8 meters each second every second or 9.8 meters each second squared. This is the acceleration of an object in free fall. And we are ignoring something here. We are saying that the effect of air resistance is so small that it's negligible or it can't be, can be ignored. So this assumes no air resistance. So that's what we have for our acceleration of an object in free fall. Our value is 9.8 meters each second squared, or 9.8 meters each second every second. So this is going to be a value that you'll need to know when you solve for problems using acceleration formulas like we've done before. So let's go ahead and try that with another problem now, specifically dropping an object. So let's take a look. This example problem. Luke out below, yes, Luke out below, drops a hammer from the top of a roof located 8.5 meters above the ground. Determine how fast it's falling just before landing. Well, we can start off by writing our given information. I'm going to put a G to remind me of the given. We are dropping the hammer. So the initial velocity of something that's dropped is often zero meters each second. The roof is located, so it's got a distance or a displacement of 8.5 meters above the ground. And it's just falling. So we can use now that acceleration that we found, 9.8 meters each second squared. We're trying to figure out how fast it's falling just before landing. Well, that's the thing we're looking for, how fast. That's going to be our unknown, and that's going to be our final velocity. An equation that would work, we can look at our chart of equations to remind us which one would actually apply here. And this might be a good one because we don't know anything about time. So let's go ahead and use our derived equation to figure out how we can solve for this problem. So that equation was v squared equals v0 squared plus 2a delta x. You can go ahead and plug these numbers in and solve it like you've done other problems before and continue by solving for the time it takes for the hammer to reach the ground. The problem solving part is exactly like what we've done before. What's different is the fact that we have this new value for acceleration for objects that are falling only under the influence of gravity. I hope that this makes sense, but if you have questions, don't hesitate to let me know when we see each other again.